here from Mixed Media Mayhem, etc. Today we're going to make gourd chickens. This gourd is very small. Okay, it's about an inch and a half tall. It's got a couple of holes in it because my grand. I've got this gourd as well. It's maybe two and a half inches tall. Not very big, as you can see. So we're gonna make chickens, and what we're gonna do, so what you need is a small gourd and some quick wood. I know that looks backwards, but it says quick wood. I'm filming this from my daughter's house in Tacoma, so everything's gonna be different. I don't have my big overhead camera to to show you so you'll have to see it from this angle now with quick wood you once you take this little thing off the end you keep it because you need to put it back on after you get your um, piece of quick wood off as you can see it's two colors this is an epoxy wood filler so you what you do is you cut off a piece however big you need and then you knead it really well until it warms up nicely and it's all the same color and then you have 10 to 15 minutes to work with it so you don't take off a big piece you take off a very small piece at a time now I need to find the edge there it is nope in this video you might see my grandson once in a while okay now it's best when using quick wood to use like a an exacto knife or something to cut it with. I don't have that with me right now. So I'm going to use my scissors and you start out with just a small amount because um like I said you only have 10 to 15 minutes working time. So I'll probably speed this part of the video up because it's not much fun watching me need. The first part of the chicken we're going to make is the feet. I've got enough quick wood in this piece to make the feet for both of the chickens that we're going to make. But before we make the chicken feet on this one, we're going to fill the holes. This is great for any kind of gourd work. You use it for clay instead of uh, epoxy sculpt or something like that. It's less expensive, I believe, than epoxy sculpt. And it you can paint it, you can sand it, you can carve it with a carver see and now it's getting nice and soft and it's all one color and it's heated up i'm gonna take a teeny tiny piece to put in this hole here i think that would be a good place to put one of the wings so that will be completely hard and completely filled within a few minutes 15-20 minutes. Oh, there's another hole. Okay. I think I got all the holes. All right. Now, I'm going to take half of this piece of quick wood. Get it. Take half of it and make feet. Now, there's a diff different ways to make feet. Again, this would be a good place to have some. This would be a good place to have an exacto knife so I could cut it for the toes. But We'll use my scissors. Okay. 
So we have these shapes cut with the scissors and you just simply grab each one and twist it a little bit and prod a little bit and it'll look more like toes. Don't twist it too much, you don't want to break it. Pretty soft at this point because because it hasn't started hardening yet. Okay, now, and I'm doing this backwards towards the camera, so I hope you can see it well. Oops, sorry. Let's put this little guy on. When you set the gourd on top of the epoxy, the quick wood, you will see that it will make it nice and flat. I'm working on top of parchment paper so that it doesn't stick to anything. My daughter's table is wood and it would stick like crazy. So I'm using parchment paper, kind of separating the feet here, giving her two feet. Okay, there we go. Now let's give this one some feet. And we'll twist the toes a little bit. Shape the toes a bit here and there. Separate the feet. One foot is much fatter than the other, and that's okay. Okay, while the feet are setting, let's work on some wings. Now you can use uh, molds, silicone molds for this. It works, you have to put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the mold so the quick wood doesn't stick. But uh, it works quite well. I don't have any molds with me here in Tacoma, so I'm going to make them by hand. In order to do that, I need more quick wood. I'm going to take enough off for two wings on one bird, which is about the same amount that I use for the feet on both birds. Time to knead again. I'll fast forward it. Kind of stinks a little bit, but don't worry about that. Okay, I'm gonna take approximately half. I'm gonna make the shape for the first set of wings. And the way I do that is as I push it down, I kind of push it down into a teardrop shape. And then I put so that this is the this is facing you is the front. I'm gonna wrap the wing around the back. Just press it down a little bit. I'm gonna keep the front. Press the back down, but keep the front. Eh, that doesn't look right. Okay, let's try this. Press the front down, leave the black back flapping, like so. Okay. 
and you can put them in any configuration you want and it should stay I'm going to wish I had my exacto knife I'm gonna trim that off Do the same thing on the other side. Try to make them approximately the same size. And you don't have to have your wings out like this. You can put them flat on their body. You can do it any way you want. I think it's cute to have them flapping, but it's entirely up to you. I'll be showing you pictures later on of some chickens I've made and painted. Now I've got just a little bit left from the wings, but that's enough for a, a beak and a waddle. So I took about two thirds and one third. The one-third part, the smaller part, is going to be the beak. So I just rolled it into a little tube and I'm going to flatten the wide end and narrow the skinny end and flatten the wide end and then I'm going to put the wide end right where I want her beak. I want her beak going down a little bit. You want to make sure that's adhered well. Once it dries, it's permanent. It's quite hard. It gets quite hard. It is epoxy after all. Now for the waddle, the skinny end is going to go up under the beak. And I'm going to use my scissors and cut it into three little, looks like toes, but when there, it's under the beak, it'll look like a waddle. And you just put it right here under the beak looks like the beak needs to be bigger and the waddle smaller let's make the waddle smaller yeah. there we go there that looks good Flatten it a little. Bring the beak out a little. Can you hear my grandson's voice? Isn't he sweet? Okay. So she's leaning a little bit. I'm going to let that go. Because the feet are just about hard. They're not going to change much. Okay, now we're going to make the little, what? we're going to make the comb on the top of her head. I need to get a little bit more quick wood. Just a little bit more. Here I am. I'm going to make it into a circle. And then I'm going to elongate it just a little bit. And then I'm going to flatten the top. Okay, and we're going to 
place it on her head like so. I'm going to press it down there and we're going to really adhere it on there. Now I'm getting fingerprints on all of this and that's okay because I can sand it. I can sand it to uh, get the fingerprints out once it's hardened. is from the side. There she is from the back. And the front. Okay, now I'm going to cut into her water, into her comb like so. And just give those a little twist. Not all chicken combs look like this, of course. You can make any shape you want. It's good if you take it ahead of time if you look at some um, chicken pictures so you get an idea of, of the shapes you might want to make. Okay, now the last thing we need is some eyeballs. I'm going to have to wait on the eyeballs because I can't get that small of a piece off of the quick wood. And so that's, we're going to let this set and I'll paint it when I come back. Bubble bubble bubble, 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 b